twenty dollars down the street. Give me that rent now. So one of the things I miss most is the chefs, great guys, all you know, blue collar guys from Boston. Yeah. Good people. Yeah. You ever been to Boston? Once, just one of them as well. Yeah. Mm. See the U.S.'s Constitution going on in the red brick road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good city. Yeah. More expensive than here somehow, but good city. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to be a bar back. So oh, I really? Missed that, I missed that important lesson. Yeah. the chef to rip something up. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I, I've been working, oh, I'm trying to get work at the whole time this summer. You know, okay. Opening, um, op opening days coming up. Yeah. Opening yeah. season's about to start. That's when their, their season really begins, right? But at least, you know, the both, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've been meeting some of the bar back there. There's a few people. I'll be well you know, all restaurants, you know, on top of the owner, right? You know, you're getting back top of the you know, The night crew is always better than the day crew somehow. You know how it is? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> oh, it was always on the phone. Fuck him. Yeah. 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 Feeling that bastard. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep it. Yeah, at least we're doing it. So we go. Yeah. White calls. Sorry, now we gotta worry about the park on the tunnel. I don't know. He's sitting down too much. I try, yeah, I try to get up more. <laughs> well, absolutely. I go for a walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and Oh, that would be a Salazar. Why does someone have an empathy for I think he's giving a tour. Oh, I see. He followed him right now. Did he escape the city last night? Mm-hmm. How yeah. was that? It was good. Was good. it with your, like, with your whole staff there? No. Um, you were driving, right? Yeah. I was there, too, for a year, before Lou came in. It's, it's a grind. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's a grind for you, too. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's cool, though. I mean, you know, obviously, I get to see some other people. So. Yeah, and you get FaceTime with the member. Yeah. They actually get to remember your name. That's awesome, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not... I'm, I figured you know, it's it's the it's the rituals, yeah. you know. Hey. The, the baptism of fire, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, uh, well, yes. I envy those fucking baptisms. Like, oh, I've never, I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've heard of it. I've heard cheap. Yeah. You know, cheap and all these, you know, far time private yeah. 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 History, a political science kid to go to college with no job at So you're going to vote for me, right? The first Cuban-American president, me? Julio Solovera? Are you a poli I was too. I'll be the first United States president. Don't worry, man. I didn't you know. I, I double major, so... I didn't start with poli I started with the philosophy. What the fuck am I going to do with that? Teach. <laughs> Teach. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a circle. You, you, just, you, make, you make more philosophy. I'll be your first one. You know, my family left Cuba in but, um, 1955. What is it, uh, And Fidel Castro killed my uncle. I lost my farm, everything that I inherited. My grandfather was CIA. I'm crazy and mongrel. I went back and tried to find everybody. Yo voy a ser el próximo presidente. This is me right here. You guys like Cuba. That is me. It's fine. You just have to let them know. I am the press conference. You're welcome. You're going to vote for me. You will start tearing down your whole thing. You'll do a better job. Um, where's Maria? Vamanos. Oh, we're going to see Fox in network here. With you and all your lies, you'll be charged with treason. Don't tell me to be quiet, old man, okay? The crippled people, they belong somewhere else, okay? That, that's right. What people? And I'm here for a press conference. I am presidential candidate. Yeah, he said that about the guy. He's a presidential candidate. I do. I do. I don't need to talk to you. Don't even. I'm crippled people. I'm not crippled people. You are crippled people. You are crippled people. I don't mean, don't, don't engage, don't engage. All right, all right, come on, Maria, no. let's just go. Don't get, if he kicks my dog, there's going to be a problem, so get out of town. <laughs> I need a pen, I need a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hey, boys. Hey, 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 
And get the, the uh, police. They vote for me. Yeah. Get the, yeah. Capital police. Yeah. Just make sure. Yeah. Get that capital police. Um, okay, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Thank you very much for being here. I just want to ask a question. How many uh, um, outlets in English? Raise your hand. English. All right. And how many outlets in Spanish? Spanish. All right. So, um, okay. Uh, I'm going to start. Uh, the, I'm, I'm going to do a few remarks in English. Uh, then in Spanish, and uh, and then we'll we'll talk to. Uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity. I, first of all, I thank uh, my colleague Nicole Maliotakis for putting this press conference together. The reason why we're here is because once again, unfortunately, after 65 years, uh, we have to. Um, yeah, so you know, I, I love this because you know, thank you. if 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 we travel to Cuba now, you won't be able. And to you this. and I, we go. I mean, they will not let me in, but they will let you in. And you will not be able to come close, this close, to the Capitol and speak your mind and have a dialogue like we could be having right now because they will either put you in jail or put you back on a plane back to Miami or two. Or kill you. So, well, yeah. So, uh, so we are, we're people. advocating we are, right by now by for by this way, this is thing. not your pro co pro press conference. Can we, you move a little bit, please? To Cuba. Can you all move, please? But all I'm saying is move, that I, I wish the average Cuban could have right the same right privilege right that you're right having right now. Well, thank you so, for giving welcome. us the privilege yeah. to be here. Listen, you can just move that way, but we just said that we have the First Amendment right But this is our press conference. Of course, of course. But you see, this is this is exactly Exactly. This is exactly what we want for Cuba. This type of freedom that anyone can bring with a poster, stand right in front of the Capitol and be able to talk to elected officials like we are and express their thoughts. That is what we want for Cuba. But unfortunately, these two ladies do not know what really happens on that island, that the Castro regime is a snake that bites and injects venom into people's veins whenever they can. Whether it is the elected officials yeah. that go, like some of our colleagues that just went last week, or people like them, or the poor Cuban people. And that's why we're here, because we're demanding the Biden administration to open their eyes and to understand that unfortunately, Regardless what you want to do, if you want to be good, if you want to be kind, if you really want to include the Cuban regime into the international community like President Obama did a few years ago, the Cuban regime will always, always bite you back because they are in the business of power and they do not want to give you any of the market share of the power that they have been holding for 65 years. So... We are here to denounce what's still happening in Cuba. We are asking the Biden administration not to remove Cuba from the list of terrorist countries because they are terrorists and they are terrorizing their own population. I, Maria Salazar, the representative of District Number 27, the heart of the Cuban exile community, people that love their islands, people that are separated, that their families right now are crying. They're desperate because they can't go. The others cannot come. It's a major mess for the Cuban population because of the Cuban regime. So number one, we're asking the Biden administration not to remove Cuba from the list of terrorist countries because that's what they are. And if they were to do so, all they're going to do is give them oxygen, economic oxygen, to the Castro regime. And number two, send a message to our colleagues here in the capital, people who are elected officials who just went to Cuba, and to and make them understand. No, you can, you can. You can come on the other side. No, but not among us. But you can go next to her. You can go next to her. You can go next to her, yes. Of course. We, we're not, we're, yeah. we don't do like the Cubans do. There you go. I can be over here then. You can be right over there. Over there. Over there yeah. But let me tell you, you're Colombia, right? Yes. Good. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you were to go, si tú vas a Cuba ahora, y haces eso mismo, que estás haciendo, 
delante de una conferencia de prensa que haga Díaz Canel, lo primero que van a hacer es meterte en una cosa que se llama Villa Marista. Y ahí te van a interrogar y te van a decir quién te mandó, seguramente te mandó el imperialismo, seguramente te mandó o Mario, o te mandó María, o te mandó Carlos. Lo que pasa es que esta belleza que tú estás haciendo aquí y que nosotros te estamos respetando, no se puede hacer en Cuba. Entonces yo estoy segura que tú estás de acuerdo, ¿verdad? Que esto mismo que tú estás haciendo aquí, el cubano promedio lo necesita y lo merece. ¿Estás de acuerdo? El cubano promedio que vive en Cuba necesita y merece lo que tú estás haciendo aquí en los Estados Unidos. ¿Sí o no? Necesita y merece que no, se no, levante el bloqueo. No, 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 no. María, come on. All right, so, you know, so we have to go, so otherwise I would continue the dialogue. Yeah, you can do that. Bottom line, bottom line, we want, the, we want for the Cubans the same thing we have, this. We want freedom, we want liberty, and we want human rights. We want free market economy, and we just don't have it. So we're sending the Biden administration that message, and to the colleagues who just went to Cuba, to open their eyes, not to drink the Kool-Aid, and not to negotiate with the snake. Because once again, I say, the Cuban regime is a snake that will bite you every time you come close and they'll inject venom into your veins to kill you because they want to preserve the business of power. I thank you very much. Now, tengo que decirlo en español. Muchas gracias a mi compañera Nicole Maria Chakis. Y gracias a todos ustedes por estar aquí. Estamos en el Capitolio, un día precioso, cerca, al lado del poder de la democracia en este país, para denunciar nuevamente lo que está haciendo el, 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 el régimen, el, 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 el comunismo en Cuba, el régimen de los castros. ¿Y qué es lo que está haciendo? Está haciendo, eh, como siempre, tratando de suprimir las libertades del cubano promedio. Y estamos aquí para pedir dos cosas, que no quiten a Cuba de la lista de países terroristas y que nuestros compañeros que acaban de venir de, de la isla, compañeros que son elected officials, que también son congresistas, que fueron a reunirse con Díaz Canel, que entiendan que se están tomando el Kool-Aid, que, no no, que no piensen que los cubanos son verdaderamente tienen buenas intenciones, que el régimen castrista lo único que es es una serpiente que lo único que quiere hacer es morderte y meterte en las venas veneno para que te mueras mientras que ellos se mantienen en el poder, porque ese es el único negocio en el que están, en el del poder, no para darle al resto de la población cubana ningún tipo de beneficios. Ese es nuestro mensaje, eh, hablamos después si ustedes quieren, y le voy a dar la oportunidad ahora a Antón Madachakis o a Mario. O a Mario. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias María, uh, buenos días. Good morning. Buenos días. Thank you all for being here. Uh, in freedom, you know, where you can express your opinions, and that's why we are always okay with folks who have a different point of view, even if they are consistently on the sides of the enemy uh, of the enemies of the United States. Uh, we live in freedom. Uh, a group of our colleagues recently went to Cuba. And it's interesting; they didn't announce it to anybody. They don't have to. And, and among the messages that uh, they brought back was to try to remove the regime off the state sponsor of terrorism list. Why is the regime on the state sponsor of terrorism list? Because it is, according to law, a state sponsor of terrorism. They harbor fugitives from American law, including cop killers. They, by the way, are now training troops. They are trained in Belarus, Cuban troops, by Belarus military, even to fight for Russia in Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. That regime is a close ally of every U.S. adversary and of every rogue regime, whether it's communist China, Iran, North Korea, you name it. They were caught even attempting to smuggle 240 tons of weapons illicitly, illegally, into North Korea, another terrorist regime. And I can go on and on and on. I can also go on about Mr. Manuel Rocha, who has admitted to spying for the regime for decades. Or, uh, or how about the other convicted spy, Ana Belén Montes, one of the most damaging individuals as far as espionage against the United States, who potentially is even responsible for the death of an American hero. And we can go on and on about why it is on the list of, of state sponsors of terrorism. So our colleagues obviously have the right to go wherever they want to go. But the fact that their message is not to demand freedom, elections, 
for the regime to stop helping terrorist groups and rogue nations around the country. Their demand was not to have to, to, to turn over to U.S. authority those who have been living the high life in Hoover harbored by the terrorist regime who are on the most wanted list by the United States. No, the request is to once again ask for things that the regime wants in order to help itself stay into power. And let's be very, very clear. At least, at least these individuals that went are consistent. They were among a relatively small number who even voted against a resolution by our Democratic colleague, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, condemning the crackdown of innocent people, including, by the way, minors, who have been sentenced to decades in prison in Cuba for the simple act of peacefully asking for freedom. What these ladies do here, because here we do have the freedom to do, except that in this case, they have condemned them, including minors, to decades of prisons, sentences, for the simple act of peacefully asking for freedom. So respectfully, but vigorously, we ask our colleagues to not be blinded, to follow the facts, and to not be a useful idiot of a regime that is a state sponsor of terrorism 90 miles away and that has not had free and democratic elections in over six decades. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes por estar acá. Ustedes saben que un grupo de colegas del Congreso de los Estados Unidos, un grupo pequeño, un grupo que consistentemente se expresa para ayudar al régimen terrorista en La Habana, que hasta votan en contra de resoluciones que condenan a la represión del pueblo cubano. Ellos fueron a Cuba, lo hicieron relativamente secretamente, es interesante, la prensa, la prensa como ustedes son los que lo descubrieron, eh, y el recado que trajeron de regreso fue que quieren quitar a la tiranía de la lista de estados terroristas. ¿Pero por qué la tiranía cubana está en la lista de estados terroristas? Porque es un régimen terrorista, según la ley de los Estados Unidos. Porque consistentemente actúa contra los intereses de los Estados Unidos. Obviamente también en contra de los intereses de su propio pueblo. Porque consistentemente, agresivamente agrede a los intereses de los Estados Unidos. Porque coopera con los otros grupos y estados terroristas a través del mundo. Porque mantiene en la isla a fugitivos de la ley de los Estados Unidos, incluyendo a individuos que, están, eh, eh, que estaban aquí en la cárcel por asesinar, por matar a un policía norteamericano. Por eso, y muchas otras razones, es que está en la lista de estados terroristas. Nuestros colegas no regresaron a insistir, después de su visita, insistir a que el, que el, que el pueblo cubano se merece elecciones libres, no. Para insistir que ese régimen no ayude y que no esté entrenando, que no hayan tropas cubanas entrenándose en Belarusia para ayudar a luchar en contra eh, de Ucrania a favor eh, de la invasión de Rusia. No. No regresaron exigiendo la libertad de los presos políticos. No. Regresaron con un mensaje que es consistente con lo que siempre han hecho ese, estos individuos. Ayudar, asistir, darle aliento y apoyo a este estado terrorista 90 millas de los Estados Unidos, que hace más de seis décadas no tiene elecciones libres, ni prensa libre, ni sindicatos independientes libres. Así que le agradecemos, le agradecemos a todos ustedes que estén acá. Y lo que estos individuos que están haciendo aquí, que nosotros les damos la bienvenida, Gracias. aunque discrepamos, obviamente, con la actitud que ellos tienen de siempre ayudar a los enemigos de los Estados Unidos, pero en una democracia lo pueden hacer. Y lo que nosotros estamos solamente exigiendo es que se respete los derechos humanos en Cuba, que se eh, den cuenta de por qué está en la lista de estados terroristas y que cesen de ayudar a ese estado terrorista. Ahora, eh, con, uh, let, let me now leave you with, oh yes, um, Congresswoman Malatakis, who is one of the amazing freedom fighters in this process, who has seen firsthand 
what oppressed people have had to suffer because she represents, represents individuals who don't talk about the situation on the island, who don't uh, demonstrate in favor of the terrorist regime, but who have suffered from the repression and the murderous regime 90 miles from the United States. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis from New York City, represents Staten Island and Southern Brooklyn. Uh, I'm the daughter of a Cuban refugee, and like my colleagues behind me, uh, our families were destroyed by communism. Our families were torn apart by the Castro regime. My father's, uh, my grandfather's gas stations were seized from him. My mother fled with my grandmother and came here. She never saw her father again. That's what communism does. It destroys. Let's be clear about that. Now, why should Cuba remain on this list of state-sponsored terrorism? And why are we offended by members of the socialist squad who are clear communist sympathizers for making a trip to Cuba, not to meet with the people, but to actually meet with the communist regime that destroyed our families? Why? Because... They harbor terrorists. They harbor FALN terrorists, including uh, terrorists that killed New Yorkers in Francis Tavern. They harbor cop killers. You know the name Joanne Chesimard, killed a New York, New Jersey state trooper. They are allowing communist China and Russia to operate spy bases 90 miles from our shores. They support Iran, who supports Hamas, who supports Hezbollah, who I know our friends here were just here not that long ago supporting. All right? That's the reality of what communist Cuba does. Not to mention that they helped make other nations in the South communist. Venezuela is a perfect example. So instead of standing here protesting our press conference, you should be at the southern border or maybe standing at the other side of uh, the, the ocean where we're seeing Cubans fleeing in makeshift rafts. And maybe you could learn about what is actually happening in communist Cuba because you're using a privilege that we only have here in the United States that the Cuban people do not have. And as my colleague said, you will be jailed you will be beaten. You will be killed if you do what you're doing right here, protesting in freedom, if you do it in Cuba. So it's ironic that we stand here with signs supporting a communist regime that does all those things. It's a shame, really. But I thank you all for being here, and we will continue to fight the communist sympathizers who are walking in the halls of Congress today and are siding with all these terrible regimes and anti-American countries that only seek to destroy us. Thank you. My good friend, Carlos, who is probably, uh, you know, he's, he actually is my best friend in Congress and we have, share a similar story. Also, he's from Miami and he's the only Cuban born member of the United States Congress. I'd like to introduce my good friend, Carlos Jimenez. Thank you, Nicole. And, um, and certainly a, a privilege for me to be here. And, uh, and Nicole is right. I, I, I thank God every single day uh, that my mother and father brought me here to, uh, to the United States and the land of the free where I can actually, um, I have freedom. Uh, freedom to choose, freedom to speak, freedom of religion, freedom to elect whoever I want, vote for whoever I want. Um, and I was brought here uh, when I was almost seven years old. And I wholeheartedly, you know, um, I'm in favor and in agreement with everything that's been said so far. I'm here to protest uh, what uh, Representative uh, Yaya Powell and Representative uh, Omar did, try to secretly go to, the, to, to, to Cuba, talk to the regime, the regime that has, had, has been oppressing my people for over 64 years. Uh, a regime that has basically destroyed the island. Cuba used to be the jewel of the Caribbean. Uh, and now you have millions of people that have fled the island. Uh, many of them had to jump on makeshift rafts just to get out of Cuba. Now, 
whenever you have a country that doesn't allow its people to freely travel out of the country, that should give you an indication that there's something wrong in that country. And yet, and yet these two representatives travel to Cuba to try to lift an embargo, uh, an embargo that is there to put pressure on the regime to have free and democratic elections, and also to lift them from the list of, of uh, terror, uh, sponsors of, of state terrorism. Cuba, without a doubt, is a sponsor of, of state terrorism. Today, you, uh, there are Cuban mercenaries that are fighting for the Russians uh, in their invasion of Ukraine, trying to uh, deny the freedom to the Ukrainians that the, the Cubans also are denied in Cuba. Um, you know, I, all I ask them is, this, hey, take a look around Cuba. When you're there, why don't you just take a look around and then see if that's what you want to bring to the United States. Uh, because Cuban is kind of frozen in time in 1959. The buildings are deteriorating. The infrastructure is deteriorating. The people have no right uh, to, to have the jobs that they, they want. The, uh, the, Cuba is also not only a state sponsor of terrorism, but they're also uh, involved in modern-day slavery. They sell the services of their doctors around the world. But these doctors don't get the benefit of the fruit of their labors. Actually, 90 percent of their salaries are actually taken by the Cuban government uh, for their purposes. And to make sure that the doctors don't leave and stay where, they, where, they're, where they're assigned to, the Cuban families aren't allowed to go with them. That's the Cuba that Representative Omar and Representative Yaya Powell you know, uh, are trying to support. And as a Cuban-born born member of Congress, somebody who's been dealing with the issue of Cuba uh, since, uh, since I was seven years old. Um, you know, I strongly disagree with what they did, and I strongly urge the Biden administration not uh, to lift any sanctions or to you know, take them off the list of, uh, of a terrorist nation. And so I'll say a couple of words in Spanish. Um, como la, el, único, el único miembro del Congreso que nació en Cuba, yo... Yo le doy gracias todos los días a mis padres y mi, y mi madre por, por traerme aquí a los Estados Unidos eh, y la libertad. Uh, yo no puedo creer y, y estoy muy ofendido por el, el viaje que, que tuvieron la representante Yaya Powell y Omar a Cuba tratando de ser secreto para ver en qué manera ellos podían ayudar al, al régimen que ha, que, que ha oprimido a, a, mi, a mi pueblo por 64 años. A, a tratar de ver en, a ver en qué manera le puedan ayudar a ese pueblo. Eh, los Estados Unidos tiene que ser y, y, y tiene que defender los principios de la libertad, de la democracia, no solamente en nuestro hemisferio, no solamente en Cuba, no solamente en Venezuela, no solamente en Nicaragua, pero en todo el mundo. Y que hay representantes de, de este gobierno, de, de, de este Congreso, que vayan a Cuba para ayudar un régimen que no ha tenido... Eh, elecciones libres en más de 64 años es increíble para mí. Y enseña que están completamente equivocados, que no saben lo que están hablando, no saben lo que están haciendo, o si no, saben muy bien lo que están haciendo y que tra están tratando de traer ese sistema a este país. Y ahí es donde yo voy a decir que no. Porque nosotros vinimos aquí, a, 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 a los Estados Unidos, para la libertad. Ah, y, y voy a luchar con todo lo que ten, tengo para asegurar que mis niños y mis nietos vivan en un país que es libre, elecciones libres y, 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 y no debajo de una dictadura como lo que tenemos en Cuba, en Venezuela y Nicaragua. Muchas gracias y que Dios los bendiga a todos. Take any questions we have, we have, or we don't? Yeah. We have to go vote. All right. Okay, so then our, our turn again. now. We believe in diplomacy. Oh, oh, and we think oh, that we should go to any countries to try to improve relations with them.